I'm going to say it. Here we go. Welcome to live lesson two. Feels official now. Feels good. Um, same guitar. We're back. Same guitar. Same room. Same me. Um, and this week, not this week, I already did one this week. This time, we're going to do a song of mine called Hold Back the River. You may know it. You may not. Either way, I am going to try and break it down for you and show you how I play it. Um, usually, it's a bit similar to the record and it's a bit different to the record because I've sort of been playing these songs live for a bit. Um, so they, they, they morph and transform over time. I hope you can see me all right on here. Um, because I'm so professional, this phone is set on a suitcase leaning against a shoe. I like to keep it homegrown. Um, I'm gonna play you. I'm gonna play you the song. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try and show you like a simple way to play it as well. If anybody uh, tuned in and saw me a couple of days ago um, showing everybody how to play "Let It Go," then uh, you'll remember the kind of the simpler version, the more sort of basic chords version, and then the kind of complicated. Well, not that complicated, but um, for some people maybe. Everybody's coming in at different abilities, but um, the, the just the the kind of way that I play it. I'll show the two different versions. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get into this now and um show you how I do it. First things first, I've got to pick. I'm gonna hide that between my fingers. I'll tell you about that later. I'll try and remember to at least. Here we go. I'll try and remember all the words. <laughs> Stop for a minute and see where you hide Hold back the river, hold back Once upon a different life We rode our bikes into the sky But now we're caught Flashing by Oh, 
there you have it. That's how I hold back the river. I mean, that's how I play hold back the river. And like I say, it's kind of transformed a little bit, at least, over the years. That was a lot of singing. Yeah. I'm going to drink a lot of water. Um, so it's, tr it's transformed over the years, uh, the few years that I've been playing it live since, since the record came out. Um, and there's, there's things about it that have sort of changed about how I play it, because I guess, if nothing else, when you play live, when you play songs in front of people, as some of you will know, and as some of, the, some of you will find out, there's a whole load of adrenaline that comes with playing live. And it rushes through and it makes you sort of do all these delicate things with quite a lot of force and you've got to be careful and you've got to work out how to manage that so you don't. Basically, so that instead of, you know, you might want to go like this. But adrenaline kind of makes you want to go. So you've got to be careful managing that adrenaline. So I've worked out different ways to do things live. Before I get into it, I want to do something else. Um, I, I had a little look at the comments and a lot of people were asking and I'm going to try and sort of look more at the comments after I put these up uh, and try and answer questions but one question kept coming up from a lot of guitar players I guess there's a lot of guitar players uh, watching these things which is really cool um, a lot of people asked about the strings I use on this guitar I talked about this guitar in the Let It Go video this is still for Hold Back the River as well this is my 1966 Epiphone Century um, and I talked all about in the Let It Go video about all the stuff that make this guitar make noise. And the one thing I didn't talk so much about was the strings. So for anybody who was asking, these are gauge 12s. They're quite a heavy string and they're quite kind of thick. Um, they have a wound G string, which, and I've written it down because it's hard to remember. Check it out. I've got my notes here. Um, I, I wrote it down because uh, my wonderful, fantastic, handsome, charming guitar tech, his name is Art. He, uh, he, um, uh, he uh, very handily tell, told me that they're Didario EJ21s is what these strings are called. Uh, well, that's the brand of strings and the maker strings that I'm, I'm using for anybody who's interested. These are gauge 12s with a wound G string. Um, these ones, like, on, uh, like with Let It Go, for Hold Back the River and for a lot of my songs, not all of them, but for a lot of them, um, these are tuned down a whole step. I love when I said G-string, there's loads of people typing G-string in the comments. Of course, there's some fantastic innuendo that comes with that particular string. Nice one. Uh, um, so yeah, these are, yeah, these are uh, Daddario EJ21s. They're down a whole step, tuned down a whole step, and uh, they got a wound G. Um, and they make this guitar sound the way I want it to sound. So, wait a minute, somebody asking about tuning? Hopefully I answered that question. It's kind of standard tuning. It's just down a whole tone. Um, I'm going to take you through, I'm going to break this song down. This song consists of, let's have a think, an intro. Um, and as far as the guitar part, that's the same in the verse. So the intro and the verse do the same thing. Um, and then the chorus. You go to the chorus, the, the bridge or the middle eight is the same as the intro in the verse. So that, I'll go back, that kind of counts. It, obviously it counts, but I'll, it's the same part. Um, and then, yeah, you've got the chorus and then you've got the, the, the outro. I'll break it down as I go. They're, they're similar and different, these parts, but let's get into the most kind of... Well, before I get into the complicated, I, I've, I've got to get into the riff, and then I've got to sort of show you how you can do a simpler version as well. It all kind of comes under the same thing. But tune, tune your guitar down, so the E string goes down to a G. Um, the, G the E string goes down to a G. The A string goes down to a G. The D, the D string goes down to a C. The G string goes down to an F, the B string goes down to an A, and the high E string goes down to a D, like the low E string also goes down to a D. Complicated. It's like letter maths. Very complicated. Uh, so, uh, and then we're essentially, the song is in the key of D minor, but the way that it looks for guitar players who kind of work visually is it looks like it starts on an E minor, which is on the seventh fret, the lowest note is on the seventh fret, and kind of like in Let It Go, it's this kind of roots and thirds thing. And similar to Let It Go, the G string, our, our old friend who we, who we love, is, uh, is ringing out throughout the middle of all of it. So that's your first shape. We're going to get into the main riff. Hey Art, there he is. We're going to get into the main riff. It starts there. I'm going to try and get it all on this tiny little screen. We're working on 
the A string, I'm going to call them what the, what the string's actually called, even though we're tuning them down. We're working on the A string, the G string, and the B string. And we're moving that shape around, essentially. That one is like a minor chord, then another minor chord, and keep that G string ringing through the middle the whole time. So we're going, we're going to rise up, we're going to... And I'm kind of, I'm not plucking, you can pluck all three strings at the same time. If you want, generally I break it up, so it goes one, two, three. One, two, three, but really fast, so. So we're going up from that, what looks like an E minor, through that F sharp minor, up to a G major. And recognize that on this third chord, it's not like a minor chord. It's actually, you have a, sh the third is sharper. I'm talking kind of in guitar, like music theory. I don't fully know what I'm talking about. So I'll carry on just trying to show you. So we're going like that. So once you've got, the, the riff is in two parts. Once you've got that bit under your, under your fingers. And I'm only plucking those three strings each time. So it's the two strings I'm fretting and the open G string in the middle. And then you climb up. So you go all the way up to essentially the kind of the, uh, the 10th fret, the 10th and 12th fret. And then you climb all the way up to, I'm just counting frets here, like don't know what numbers frets are. Uh, then you climb up and you go. So we're going all the way up to the 15th and 17th fret. And we're doing a little minor shape into a major shape there, as you can see. Minor into major, which sort of looks like all the way up the fretboard looks like a B minor into a C major. I like that someone's got their guitar and they're trying to figure it out. I'm going to put this video up like the other one afterwards so you can slow it right down and hopefully make it make even more sense. But you do that. And then back down to that, that main chord, that G chord. So, so I'll go through the whole thing because that last bit repeats. So. It goes again. And then we've got this funky bit at the end around a D chord. So we're going to let... We're gonna go open D string, and that kind of works all on the beat. And you can let that G string ring the whole time. We're gonna go. And then hit on the 10th fret, on the high E string, hit that, that note at the top there. And that, comes back so much in this song that is the verses and that is the uh kind of the bridge the middle eight um i'll show you again i'm shaking all this vibrato you don't have to that makes some sense to everybody that is the backbone of this song um, I suppose the chorus is usually the backbone of a song but it seems in this case it's the riff so that's the verse we're gonna go once you got the lyrics down or whoever's singing try to keep you close to me but life got in between Try to square, not be there, but it's there that I, I should have been. So that's it, that's your verse, there's no pre-chorus, and then we're going to go straight into the chorus. I'm going to show you the simpler way to do this first. As it looks on the guitar, you're working with a C major chord, a G major chord, and a D major chord. So you'd start the chorus on that C major chord and you go up here like this for anybody who knows what they look like or if not, you can go and find all over the internet loads of great pictures of a C major chord. Oh, hold back the river, let me look in your eyes Hold back the river so I To the G You can stop for a minute and see where you hide Hold back the river To the D chord Hold back We'll do that again, even though it only goes once on the first chorus, we'll go Hold back the river, let me look in your eyes Hold back the river so I 
stop for a minute and see where you hide. Hold back the river, hold back. And you can strum them. Just try and keep it in time and, and strum them underneath that chorus in any way you want, really. Um, and then it goes back to just half of that riff for like a re-intro into verse two. And then verse two um, happens the same. Once upon a different life, we rode our bikes into the sky. But now we're caught against the tide. Those distant days all flashing by. We're back and I'll show you that simple chorus again. Hold back the river. So it starts on a C chord. And I'm fretting the top string on the third fret because it sounds good. You don't have to. Hold back the river, let me look in your eyes. Hold back the river, so I stop for a minute and see where you hide. Hold back the river, hold back. Hold back the river, let me look in your eyes. Hold back the river, so I stop. Before we go on, I'm going to show you how I play the chords, if you want to check out a different way to play the chords in the chorus. I do this mad thing where I wrap my thumb around um, this side of the fretboard to catch the low E string, and that covers my bass note. I hit this with a pick. And then I do these shapes. These are kind of all like e, e, what, what are called E shapes of the chord. So I wrap my thumb around, because this is a C chord over here, but you can also play a C chord around the 8th uh, and 10th fret. So there's your C chord. And then here's the low note. And I hit it like that. I go home. And then I move it slightly from there to the G chord. And you move those notes over. And you go, and that, again, if you want to Google this stuff, that's like called a C shape G chord. Where... So I'm putting, it's like a first inversion, so I'm putting a, a weird note on the bottom, which is part of the chord, so it works out. So you got... And then I go open D string, and I fret on the 11th fret on the G string, and the 10th fret on the B string. The river, but you can also just play a normal D chord there if you want. And that's the chorus. And then we go into the first part of the bridge, which is just that in that verse riff, that intro riff again. Oh, 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 and I'm strumming it with a pick at this point. Oh, 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 oh. Then we get into the other part of the bridge, the other part of the middle eight. People call it different things. This starts on um, this starts on a really low, what looks like a really low G chord. With the way that the guitar is tuned, it's technically an F, but we're gonna. It looks like a G chord, so we'll call it a G chord. And it starts here. It goes. It's like a it's a classic G bar chord. You can play it as a normal G chord. You can play it as I play it as a bar chord, and it goes. Lonely water, lonely. Water to see, won't you let us wander? And then we throw in an A minor, and I play the A minor in a weird place. I play it on the tenth fret, so it's an open A string, and I play this nice little triangular shape here. And then on the D string, it's the tenth fret. On the G string, it's the ninth fret. On the B string, it's the tenth fret. And those four strings in the middle of the guitar there make up that chord for me. So it goes, uh, lonely water, let us wander. Let's throw it in there. Let us hold each other. And then it goes higher. And I come back to that funky G chord up here. Lonely water, lonely water. And I kind of get chugging. I do that palm muting thing. That the guitar players will know about that at some point. You kind of dampen the strings with the heel of your hand so they don't ring out. Let us wonder. 
there's that A minor again. There, you can play a normal A minor down here. Let us wander. And then it's just a D chord. Let us hold each other. And then back into the chorus. Hold back the river. Yes, that's the chorus goes all the way through. And then we just go in if you want to keep it really simple. You can play that G chord up here, or you can just do a normal one. And this is for the outro of the song. Um, this happens after the last chorus. We go out on this part. kind of ends on the A minor. Let us hold each other. So let that ring out and then we're back. The final thing of the song is that first riff that we started with. And as far as how you pick those um, as far as how you pick those strings, you can kind of do it however you want. Do it however feels cool. And if you want to try and copy the track, then you can, you know, with what I've shown you and a little bit of extra listening, you'll you'll find out exactly when each string is hit. But the way that I go about these things, even if I like invent the part, like in this case, is I just I always let it be of the moment um, and just kind of feel it. Basically, I think that's sort of the heart and soul of. Uh, like a well-performed song, just sort of feel it in the moment. So those are the nuts and bolts of Hold Back the River. That is pretty much how you play it. That's it. That's all we do. That's all I do. When we want to, we play fancy versions of it live when we make up new sections, but for now, best place to start is there. Just trying to think of we've got Anything else to say about this song? Really, I want to say to you all that it's really lovely to communicate with you on here and, and, and to say hi. Uh, I really hope everybody's all right. Um, it's a crazy time. It might get a bit crazier. We don't really know yet. But um, just be safe. Uh, it might be called social distancing, but just like this, we can be social, so be social. Um, talk to everybody, talk to one another spread love and wash your hands um <laughs> and uh i'm gonna come back and do more of these um it's a lot of fun to be in touch with all of you uh and please send like requests for songs and stuff i'm gonna get into it i'm gonna try and kind of go across the albums that i've released so far and, and some of the eps and pick out songs of mine that have more interesting guitar parts and stuff but um yeah it's really nice to see you all and to and to hang out and uh, I hope we can do this more and more. Be safe. Hopefully I haven't left anything out. If I have, I'll remember in the middle of the night tonight when I'm sleeping and I will try to write it down and bring it up next time I see you on here. Until then, see you soon. Bye bye. <laughs>